We're doing it. <laughs> We're live. Hey, everybody. It is 7 a.m. And we are uh, kicking off the day uh, with our daily Devo. Uh, and I'm so, so excited to be with you. I, I know uh, it's already been a great morning. It's beautiful. The sun is shining. A little cold. Uh, but I'm pumped up because I just got out for a run. And uh, so I'm ready to go. So hopefully you are too. People are tuning in right now. Uh, but for those of you who I don't know or haven't had the chance to meet, my name is Andrew. Uh, I'm the campus pastor at our Lino Lakes campus. And I've been on staff, uh, well, I've been at the Lino campus for three years, uh, but I've been on staff at Eagle Brook Church for nine years. So it is really fun for me, uh, even as I, I watch all the names popping up uh, on this feed right now, uh, how awesome it is to, to be able to know so many of you uh, because of, of how long I've been here. Uh, and so it's, it's really a joy um, to, to spend some time with you this morning uh, and spend some time with God uh, this morning with our, our daily Devo. So welcome to the daily, daily Devo, daily, daily, it's early, uh, daily Devo this morning, everybody. And actually spending time with God is exactly what I want to talk about this morning. I want to spend our time talking about that, uh, what it means, how it can look, and uh, what happens when we actually do it. But, but first... We got to talk about uh, what we've been spending our time doing lately. Um, and I'm pretty sure that for, for many of you, just like me, it's looked very different than what we ever expected or had planned for in early May. And most definitely, it looks different for each of us. Uh, some of you, I know, have had uh, more responsibilities put onto your plate and, and others um, have had things removed or you're you just have more time on your hands. Uh, but for us, uh, we've had a little bit more time on our hands as well. And we've used that time uh, for house projects. Now I gotta ask you, how many people, uh, and you can put this in the comments, how many of you people uh, have a, a to-do list in the notes section of your phone uh, with 20 something uh, to-dos that you wanna get done over this, uh, over this time? Um, so make sure you, you check that out. Uh, if you do, I'm, I'm seeing that I have no sound. I hope I have sound. Um, I think everybody's listening but, or is able to hear me. Please let me know if you can, uh, but we're so glad. So it, if you have a to-do list of 20 or so uh, in, your to, in your notes app, uh, that is, that's where we stand. Um, and yep, that's, that's us too. Uh, the first week... Of, of staying at home, my wife and I uh, decided to paint all the trim uh, in the, uh, and the doors in our house. Uh, now, we, we actually don't have uh, a big house here in Northeast Minneapolis, uh, but what I did find out is that we have a lot of trim, a, a lot, a lot of trim and a lot of doors in this small house. Um, and all this time, that we uh, have at home have us seeing things in a different light. Uh, I mean, literally, the, the light of every hour of every day. And it's, it's actually really funny, the things that you, uh, that you catch. I mean, honestly, the trim had probably hadn't been painted uh, since before we'd moved in and likely had been a, a quick job uh, when the, the previous owner was just trying to get it up on the market uh, and get it ready. Uh, and so... Uh, it all looks good until you get up close, until you actually get close to that spot and take a look at it. And, uh, and also, you start to notice these things when you're spending a lot of time at home. Uh, but it took us four days uh, to finish it all. Four days to finish it. And uh, thanks to a rainy weekend uh, and some lunch breaks, uh, we, we finished it all. But as we, as we stood back, and we looked at the trim, um, as you can see, I mean, that was painted, that trim was painted. Uh, but as we stood back and looked, I, we just started laughing. We started laughing because I just said, it looks exactly the same. If someone, if someone were to come over, uh, they'll never walk in and, and say, wow, guys, the, the trim in your house that you repainted looks great. Uh, and while they'll never specifically notice it, uh, they'll, they'll experience the impact it has on the rest of the house. Uh, 
the work that we put in while no one is watching will be felt and simply enjoyed. But why do I tell you that? I tell you that because that's how oftentimes spending time with God can feel. At least I, th I think it can. Uh, most will never see you do it. Uh, most people will never be able to point out exactly what it is that you even did. Uh, but people will experience it. And they'll be impacted by it. I, I love what uh, Romans 15, 13 says. Um, let me get to that. Romans 15, 13 says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you with, completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. I love that. I love that, that it says that because our relationship with God and the time we spend with him, because of those times, we will be filled with joy. Uh, we'll be filled with peace when we spend time with him. We'll have a hope that's powered by the Holy Spirit. And I think people on the other side of us will experience the joy and the peace from us as we overflow into their lives. Uh, they will experience the confidence in Jesus that we have as followers of his, when we're not thrown into anxiety or chaotic feelings uh, with the situations. Uh, I think they'll experience our deep-rooted trust because God's spirit is guiding, directing, and leading our lives. And I don't know about you, but I, I, want, I want that peace. I want that joy. Uh, I, I want that hope that comes from knowing and trusting God. But I also want those around me to experience it as well. I think it, it comes with being intentional about how we spend our time. Uh, but specifically, I think it, it's how we intentionally spend our time with God. Now, if you, if you were to go to our website right now, uh, you'd be able to read about what spending time with God means. And, and this is what you'd see. You'd see God invites us to spend time with him on a regular basis. We can do this through prayer, music, reflection, and reading the Bible. And then you'll see a verse, uh, John 15, 5. And John 15, 5 uh, says, Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. From apart from me, you can do nothing. So question, what does spending time with him look like for you? Uh, how do you remain in him? Now, I know many of you consider uh, attending church, being a part of a small group, uh, and these devotionals each and every morning as spending time with God. And I want to say keep rolling with those things. I think those are all amazing ways uh, to spend time with God. But here's my challenge. Here's my encouragement uh, for all of us. Take time to spend with God in an, in an additional way uh, today or this week that is a more private, one-on-one -on -one way. Uh, for me, uh, it's, it's the morning when I do that. Uh, I, I try to make it every morning. And actually, uh, I have a spot in our living room. Um, I'm actually staring at it right now. I can, uh, the chair that I sit in every single morning uh, where I sit, I read a passage of scripture or a page from a devotional, and then I journal about it. Uh, and during that time, I'm just asking God to bring something to mind uh, that I need to work on or that I need to evaluate or a truth that I need to hold on to for the rest of the day. And then I use my journal. I, I write my prayers out. So whatever it is that I'm, I'm praying about uh, that day, or, or maybe it's that passage of scripture that that. Uh, cause something to well up. I'm, I'm praying about it by writing it out. So really, it just helps me focus. Whenever, whenever I'm writing, it helps me stay focused. Uh, and the other piece of that is that my phone remains plugged in in the other room. Uh, I don't bring that uh, to my time uh, because I want to eliminate every possible distraction so I can focus on that one-on-one -on -one time with God. Now, I know uh, some of you are probably thinking, really, Andrew, uh, you, you're crazy. 
Um, because you're thinking, I'm basically right now a full-time teacher, uh, activities director, and a working parent. Uh, how am I supposed to, to find time to do that? Or uh, you've got a list a mile long uh, of all the things that you need to get done or want to get done um, and, and things that are actually, f that you can physically see. Uh, and I get it. Yes, it, it takes time. Uh, and no matter, no matter what, it's, it's not always going to be the most visible. And I have to remind myself all the time. And so let me remind myself while I remind you uh, that, that we can do nothing apart from God. We can do nothing apart from God. My day is better when I give God the time. I'm better for those around me. Most of all, my wife, uh, I'm better for, for her when I don't rush through my reading uh, in that time in the morning. So let's not just check the box and move on. Let's, let's invite God into our lives. Uh, let's pause and allow God's word to shape our lives and, and relationships by listening to what it is uh, that he says and, and what scripture says and then actually doing it. Uh, whatever your situation that you find yourself in, uh, my prayer is that we're able to find just some time to pause and spend time with God. Five minutes, 15 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, whatever it is. Uh, and in that time, I just want to give you some examples or just a list of things that you could possibly do uh, in this time. And so let me just read some of those. Uh, maybe you could go for a walk and ask God to surprise you with something that you need to hear and experience. I think God loves when we, when we ask him to surprise us. Uh, carve out some time in the morning uh, to sit and reflect on a passage and what it might mean for your day. Uh, create a routine of spending time with God and reading scripture. Uh, get the Bible app, uh, the YouVersion Bible app, or download our app and grab those, uh, grab those reading plans that exist on either of those places. Uh, grab a great book and take the challenges in that book uh, seriously. I mean, honestly, the, the one I'm working through right now is Dangerous Prayers by Craig Groeschel. Uh, so maybe it's, maybe it's that book. Uh, maybe it means getting up earlier. Maybe it means staying up later. Uh, carve some time out uh, while you're, uh, when you would have been commuting or grabbing a, a coffee or eating lunch. Uh, invite one of your kids or a friend to, to just pause with you. Uh, my, my hope is that we'll use this time to spend time with God, this time of, of quarantine, uh, to spend time with God and that we would create habits that keep us connected to him, uh, to be as intentional about making him a part of our day as we are about tackling all of the to-dos and all the things that we have on that list. But let's work on the things that, that most will never see. And, and when we're back together, they'll notice They'll experience it, and they will be impacted by the time and the things that we worked on when no one saw it. It's been a great time <laughs> to be with you, and I've loved seeing the comments, uh, but I would love to pray for us and pray for us as well uh, that uh, we would experience this. Uh, so right now, let's, let's do that. Let's pray. God, I, I'm just so thankful uh, for moments like this where we get to pause and uh, take in your word. Uh, we get to hear your voice and, um, and get your direction and find out where it is that you might be leading us. So God, I, I ask that each and every one of us, as we spend time with you this week or today, that you would fill us up, that you would fill us with joy and peace and hope that only comes from trusting you. And God, we ask that uh, through that, we'd be able to overflow uh, with those things into the lives of the people around us now, but also when we're back together and around people all the time, God, that they would experience and be impacted by the time that we've spent here and now with you. So God, we ask that it would be impactful, that it would be meaningful, and that you'd show up and surprise us in a powerful way uh, over these next few weeks as we spend time with you. So Jesus, it's all these things that we pray in your name. Amen. Amen, everybody. Uh, well, it's, it's great, once again, uh, that, that you could join us. Uh, hopefully, uh, you are going to have a great rest of the day. That's my prayer for you, but uh, have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend, 
and we'll see you online uh, for our series this weekend. So see you later.